So to do this within a reasonable price range, I bought this insulation styrofoam. I bought this giant vat used online, so it was really cheap. I think I paid 75 bucks for this and a few more sheets. These sheets are eight foot long by four foot tall. What I do is I cut it in half um, this way, and it doesn't matter if it's in half, exactly in half, and then I take the two halves, but the two halves, I cut those exactly in half because then those fold over and become one tombstone here, one tombstone there. And so one might be thicker than the other, and that's okay because I wanted variety, but at least um, the two halves should be the same size so you can cut them even and glue them together later. So I bought one of these polystyrene cutting kits on Amazon, and it works pretty good. Uh, it's not as powerful as I would like, but it definitely gets the job done. Um, so I've got the short attachment on right now. And I just want to show you for longer cuts, for large cuts, because um, there is this attachment which is nice it'll go all the way through uh, but it's slower this one that like, he's concentrate on one spot so what I do is I go in and you can see it's not as deep as my sheet my sheets about an inch maybe an over an inch deep um, and I just cut across like this and once I have that cut going all the way across I can use that as a cleavage point to break that. So you can see the edge here is half smooth where it was cut and half granular where it snapped. And as I've learned, you really want to smooth out those edges. You don't want these to become uh, the outer edge of your grave because they really ruin the stone illusion. So I've sketched out my tombstone design. I did use a ruler for this one semi-freehanded just because I'm, I'm doing a lot and I run out of time. And I am cutting now two sheets at once, so I gotta make sure when I'm actually cutting that they're level. So I'm using right now the wire attachment. This is my favorite attachment, but it can't go very deep because of the way it's structured, so I have to pre-cut some of the bigger pieces off ahead of time. It cuts really nice and clean. Uh, because it's a wire, the heat is concentrated at just one point. So you get a clean cut and it actually goes quite quick. Okay, just finishing off this cut. Oop. And you can see this will pop off and you get a really very nice smooth cut. Now, I mean, mine's not smooth smooth. That's because I wasn't very careful to hold it properly. Um, but then you can go back and kind of... Wow, I made this whole cut incredibly crooked. So I mostly freehanded a design, but I have learned to first draw guidelines for my letters so that when I'm cutting them out, it'll help them look not completely messed up. And I'm using this short little attachment. And what I do is I add some designs. This is good because it gets really, really hot. So you can just make a nice, significant, visible design. And then I do all that. But for the lettering, I'll do, I'll try and get a little fancy, I'll add little serifs. And then I'll, I'll double over the line a little bit, make it a bit thicker. You know, basically trying to get a bit of a fancier font. So this one I make wider wherever it kind of goes down. And then more serifs. And then I'll go in and I'll um, clean up some of the stuff st sticking up in the middle a bit um it's interesting styrofoam cuts very easily when it's fresh but once it's already been a bit melted it, it gets quite stiff and difficult to work with and then for the less important letters i just do a very plain font and i found this works as well because some gravestones aren't all that ornate i imagine chiseling into stone was expensive probably still is this is the inside of the tombstone how i'm attaching it into the ground for the wider shapes i use this wire fencing I had that I got for free off the internet and what I did is I just stuck that on there um, traced it and cut it out and I am putting it up to the point where the stakes will stick into the ground but everything else will be inside the structure and then I used the short styrofoam attachment to cut the shape out and also do some extra lines that then allowed me to use the wire attachment to then go in and slice out the whole plane. Now for my thinner pieces, thinner tombstones, I also have this other set of uh, more hardcore iron fencing that I got secondhand online. And because those are thicker, I, I for those I cut them out on both pieces so that the two combined will be wide enough to accommodate 
that piece. So then I glued the two sides together. Um, for these, because my cutting of the hole wasn't very precise, I actually put the wire uh, fences inside and glued it shut with them in it. The idea being that I can rip them out later and if I can rip them out, then I'll be able to slide them back in. Whereas uh, if I just try and put it back in when it's glued, then it might not fit. And that has been working very well. And so now we just wait for the glue to set. I did not paint them first for most of them. This one just was the one where I ran out of glue. Um, you see, if you paint them first, you have white showing in between. So it's much preferable to leave them white, glue them, then paint them. And as you can see, the iron fencing is in there. When the glue is dry, I'm going to sort of rip that out of there to make sure I clear a nice clear path for it to stick again when I want to stick it into the ground. First thing I'm going to paint is I'm just going to go with my darkest color and I'm doing all the sort of innards. And you can go over the lines, it's not a big deal, but what you want to do at the end is just make sure and kind of um, smudge them because sometimes a glob of paint will kind of jut out and I will ruin the illusion later. So I have my dark uh, indented bits all done and now we begin layer one and layer one is just like a base coat of light gray Again, I'm using mismatched tints from the store so this isn't as gray as I wanted but it's still pretty gray so it works so I just basically cover the whole thing in a coat thick enough to cover all the stuff from completely taking care do not ruin what I just did with the dark bed. So for the detail, I switched to a smaller brush. And then uh, if you have quite a stiff brush that won't smudge into the holes, you can kind of pull one of these by the time you get to this point. Okay, so layer one is done. Now this is layer two. It's a slightly darker shade of gray. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just applying a little bit of the paint to the paper. I'm using a roller. I don't want too much paint. I don't want a dry brush effect. And the purpose of this step is just to give it a bit of texture. Um, just to take it from a flat color to just a bit of kind of a stone effect. And for this I go a little heavier on the edges. Seems to work well. Yeah, and I also noticed there's a few spots I missed here because I was in a hurry that are showing styrofoam through, so I'm using this as a chance to fix that up. Here's a variety of graves with layer two already done. I think towards the end, I start adding a bit more. I'm not too happy with these, but it's a matter of personal preference. So starting layer three, which is that kind of like really dark, almost black, aging that kind of seems to come from the top that some tombstones get. Um, I'm doing all the edges first and what I found works best is anywhere that's facing up that's flat basically um, do 100% coverage and then kind of taper it off. I don't know what this stuff is I'm guessing it's like lichen but it might be some sort of oxidation but anyway it does seem to kind of come from the top down so that's the idea behind that and what I have is I have a paint that's quite a bit darker than my tombstone is already but I watered it down about almost one to one parts of paint to water. So I get a bit of the paint, not very much at all, and I draw, just sort of place it where, sorry, where it's gonna go, which is near the flat parts, cause that's where the lichen or whatever kind of grows from. And then a little bit towards the edges, but you don't wanna go, you definitely wanna taper towards the edge. And then, then you go in and you wanna quickly dilute the edge here before it dries and crustifies that way and then now you really want to kind of just soften this as much as you can and at first when I started this for some reason it was working very nicely but the consistency of the paint changed a little bit and I find I'm also adding water and yeah it's starting to look really dry brushy so what I'm doing I'm just adding a little very little bit of water and that helps because I noticed this black stuff, whatever it is on graves, it um, goes on very, very soft. That's why I'm doing more of a gentle technique here, not so much of a dry brush, but more of a watercolor almost effect. So earlier I thought that my paint consistency had changed, but I realized what it is is that the tombstones are getting progressively drier from the last layer from yesterday. 
and the paint behaves differently on the styrofoam because now it's super dry and the new paint absorbs really quickly. So I found a trick is I just got my dollar store water mister and I just missed a tiny bit of water. So what happens now is the surface has water already and it's not going to quickly absorb all the paint I put on like it is before, which makes it a lot easier to blend the color downward without it looking very dry brushy and allows you to work with a more watercolor like effect. And again, if you've got any left, it's good to just dump it out a little bit on the edges. And also when it's wet like this, you can go in and add a bit more in random spots and it won't be as harsh. Okay, so once you've applied all the darkening everywhere, I found if I go in and just add a teeny bit more just along the edge of just the unbridled color with no water and then just blend that in a very little bit. That just adds a little oomph of contrast at the top edge. That really makes it look aged. There's a certain amount of guess and testing to this that's uh, good to start at the back. You see that was number one and I went a bit too heavy with the striping and it looks a bit too zebra-like. I didn't like that. So trial two, I toned that down and I like that a lot better. Um, then I probably went a bit too crazy, although I, I do like this one. Okay, so now I'm starting layer four, which is the moss. And so what I've done, I just bought like a cheap cleaning sponge. Uh, roughed it up a bit with scissors and first step I just take a little bit of this and kind of smear and I'm finding that adding it mostly on the bottom looks a bit more realistic going too crazy near the top starts to look a little overdone because you get a lot of moisture at the bottom of the grave so you're gonna have more life there and then Get a little bit more paint and then I dab just a layer on a bit more of a chunky look so here again is a few stones I did I started again at the back um, with my sort of crappiest one and moved on and I really think it, I'm liking the less is more approach um, at the beginning I think I went a bit too crazy and it looks fake okay so the final fifth layer is this lichen so I just have a little bit of light gray paint and you go in and kind of make circles kind of I find if you make them oblong going down that works better and you kind of want to have a bit of a bit of a randomness to it but not too random they kind of cluster and whatever conditions are good for them. So here are some of the fronts with the lichen added. Um, my husband said they look a bit like bird feces and uh, he, has a, he has a point. Um, but you know, that's part of the aging process too and being outdoors. So that, that works, that works. So this was my final tombstone and on this one I got to basically take all the lessons I learned from the others. And most of the lessons were less is more. You can see it's got a lot more of the light gray showing still. And because it did, I was able to go in with a really light gray and add a lot more lichen, but I added in smaller specks just to texturize the whole thing more. But I like some of the darker ones too. You know, I, I love that each one's a bit different. I think that's what makes it fun. So I had a lot of styrofoam left over. I decided to make the sign. I just bought two two by twos for the poles. The paint job isn't ideal, but I was adamant on staying with the paint colors I had and not buying any more. So I did a dark look. I didn't have any orange to do rust, so I chose to do highlights in the light gray to make it look like round wrought iron. And then I'm gonna go over it with some of the green I have to add moss just to give it some sort of texture and look. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I think going vertically really adds a lot of atmosphere when creating uh, decor.